Hallelujah. As you stand, you just bow your heads with me and guys. No. Surrender my law before God <laughs> in prayer. Most holy and everlasting Father. As we have assembled on this third Sunday of living, making this journey to the empty tomb. Yes. I ask you, Lord, to just stop by here and give us the strength to make the journey. Somebody is seeking resurrection in their life on today. Yes. But we can't do nothing bother without you. Yes. So we ask you to illuminate the four corners of this village and make your anointing flourish. Set the table, my father, with the menu that you prepared for all this third day of the Sunday of Lent. Feed us from on high. Feed us till we can't want no more. Then allow us to digest that feeding with understanding. Then I'm going to ask you to just use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. The Holy Spirit, even though there's few in number, but you're already in the building with your holy host. Now allow that anointing to fall down on me. In Jesus' name I pray. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Repeat these words. Let the spoken word on today be nourishment and satisfaction for my mind, for my body, and my soul. Let me not just be a hearer of God's word, but let me also be a doer of God's word. As you're standing, look with me to the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, <laughs> verses 11 through 12. Ezekiel 37. 11 through 12 and when you get it just collect it and let me hear you say amen. 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 Ezekiel 37 11 through 12 11 and 12 amen. and the word of the Lord reads thusly then he said unto me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel Behold, they say, our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you to the land of Israel. Imagine the temple of God, I prophesy to you on today. God will transform your valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. By faith on today, walk on in and receive your breakthrough. Our focus today is hope. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. This is my season. This is my season of resurrection. Of resurrection. Now we know Satan is a path. Come on, come on, Bishop. But that's all right. Serve him notice today and say, Say time. Say time. Oh, a little louder. Say time. Say time. I need you down in the valley. I need you down in the valley. Of ashes. Of ashes. The pit. The pit. It's not that we just have a radical prayer.
First Peter 1 and 21 says, Through Christ, you have come to trust in God. Because, see, God raised Christ from the dead. So that gives us confidence in knowing that we serve a mighty God. The resurrection is the greatest event in history. And it is found on the foundation of our hope. Why is that such a strong revelation? Because Jesus had already prophesied what was going to happen. And it was fulfilled to the very letter, to the very number. So when somebody gives you a revelation over something that's getting ready to happen, something as tragic as his death and crucifixion, and give you the whole details, that should give you some hope. Somebody said, that gives me some, some hope. So Santa people say, well, yeah, that's good, Bishop, and, and, and that's good news. But how can I have hope when things are really tough in my life? Mm -hmm. When I'm going through Herman, yeah. I read about it, I hear about it, but when you start going through it, it's a whole different story. Amen. But St. John 14, 11 said, don't be troubled. Amen. Trust and believe in God. Well, that's good news, Bishop, but I'm still troubled. But I say, Isaiah said, you believe in the word of God in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4, he says, he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is staying on me. Let me give an example. When we are going through but you find yourself still coming to church. Mm -hmm. Come on, Bishop. Still praying. Yeah. Mm. Still reading your word. Yeah. It's still yet storm, but somehow in the midst of the storm, All right. yeah. you got a little peace because you have hope that God's going to make a way somehow. I don't see no way, I don't know the way, but there's something down on the inside. Yes, 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 Lord. There's something to have. Even though it's storming. Yes, but I know I'm God's child. Yes. And I know He didn't bring me this far to leave me now, so I'm just gonna hang on in there until this storm is over. Well, that's good news, Bishop. But how can I cultivate a stronger hope? Paul tells in Ephesians, this is one of my favorite scriptures, 3 and 20. He says, speak it and believe it. Right. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask or think, according to the power that is in me. So, I, I preach this a lot on the fact that we have to recognize and realize and do it that the power is in your tongue. So a man think it, so is he. So if this is your focus and you uh -oh. come into Sunday school, uh-oh, hallelujah, don't see too many. Come into Bible study, uh-oh, don't see too many. When you assemble yourself around the strong face of God, the more words you get in you, the stronger you become. His word says, You abide in me, and my word abides in you. And you can ask whatsoever I will, and I'll give it to you. Delight yourself in me, and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, we talk about. This is my season for resurrection. Well, I start by to let you know if you don't have a relationship with God, you can speak resurrection all you want. So Y'all don't like me today. 
Are you wrong? 